here we go. We got Summer Break Charlotte incoming. She is going to be dropping on July 28th. And she actually looks really, really good. This is one of the uh, units that has come out fairly recently that I think is going to be a must pull, uh, potentially even meta changing just because of her kit. Uh, she does provide a lot in her kit. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at her stats. So she is an ice knight. She is a Gemini star sign. She has a 109 base speed, so she's not incredibly slow. Uh, she's okay for a knight or for a bruiser. She has pretty decent HP and defense. Uh, she does get attack percent with her imprint concentration. She also has pretty high crit chance. She has 37% crit chance, and you're going to want to build her uh, with as much crit, crit damage, HP, defense, and attack as possible because you want her to tank and you want her to deal damage. Uh, her imprint release is health, so she could provide survivability for the rest of your team as well as imprint herself for attack. So the attack is going to be a nice bonus, but in my opinion, isn't going to be necessary at triple s but i think it's going to be good if you do have a few copies into her just to pump her pump up her attack because it's not incredibly high uh and then based on her skills uh she's not hp scaling i don't believe so uh you know she doesn't necessarily need to be like 20k hp or anything like that to deal a significant amount of damage so she is going to want at least some attack uh let's take a look at her skill too an adult responsibility increases crit chance by up to 20 percent and then at the end of every four ally turns grants enhanced dual attack to the caster and gains 15 fighting spirit so uh, you don't want her incredibly fast uh, otherwise uh, you're not going to get that enhanced dual attack you kind of want her to go uh, after everybody else goes so that way she has her enhanced dual attack uh, and then when she has her enhanced dual attack at the start of the turn when fighting spirit is full she consumes all the fighting spirit she has a full cleanse uh, and she also increases her attack for two turns and resets her skill cooldown so full cleanse attack buff and a reset in skill cooldowns that's that's kind of nuts right built in 20 percent crit chance uh, that's already giving you a lot of stats that you don't have to build from equipment right so that's actually really really nice something that you don't necessarily have to worry about uh the enhanced dual attack this is kind of interesting so it's like a priority dual attack so anytime that uh, she has enhanced dual attacks and she is able to dual attack so meaning like she's not stunned or controlled or like locked down somehow maybe slept uh she is going to take priority for a dual attack so for example if you bring in Conquer Lilius, Conquer Lilius on her S1 pulls a random ally for a dual attack. So if she has the enhanced dual attack, she is going to take priority in that random effect, right? So you're gonna pull her and hit everybody uh, with the AoE. That's, uh, that's what they're saying here. The enhanced dual attack cannot be dispelled uh, it, it does get dispelled after she uses a dual attack. So whenever there is that dual attack, you're going to hit with the AOE, uh, potentially defense break everybody. Uh, and uh, and yeah, it's it, it looks like it's going to be pretty devastating. Let's see if they show us here. There's a dual attack there uh, and then 10k damage with Vigor Bob. Uh, they don't show what her HP is here, but uh, you know, she... I'm assuming is going to be pretty tanky uh, because you want her to survive and you know in case just in case you don't you can always use her artifact uh, which i think is going to be best in slot uh, you'll see here that uh she's probably so adventure raz the way that his dual attack works he pulls in the highest attack unit uh, and so they do explain that if it is the highest attack uh, it's going to pull the highest attack unit. So here she just happens to be the highest attack unit. So Adventure Raz is pulling her uh, and she's going to AOE everybody and defense break uh, from that dual attack. So that's actually really, really strong. 
and it's going to allow for that follow-up, which is going to be pretty insane. However, if you had, let's say, a Hua Young on your team and that uh, Summer Break Charlotte, and you went with the S2 on Adventure Raz, you're going to pull the Hua Young instead because she's going to have the highest attack on the team. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, for the most part, if you're bringing her in a Bruiser team comp, she's probably going to have the highest attack. Uh, this designer and Lilibet, designer and Lilibet have really high defense. Uh, so Summer Charlotte is probably going to be in that 3,500 attack range is what I'm assuming. Uh, she's probably going to be built similar to Fire Charlotte. You know, with tank, uh, tanky stats, a lot of crit damage. Uh, she has a lot of built-in crit already. Uh, so pretty high attack is going to be a little rough. Um, but let's take a look at her skill three. It's on a six turn cooldown. You can Mola it down to uh, five turns. Attacks the enemy with a pod of killer whales. Whale, hello there. That one's pretty good. Stunning for one turn before increasing speed of all allies for two turns. Damage dealt increases proportional to the target's lost health. So her S3 is dependent on how much HP the opponent has lost. Uh, it gives AoE increased speed for two turns and it stuns for one turn. So this stun part is a little bit tricky because you're going to have to build some sort of effectiveness, right? I mean, I, I think we could go with zero effectiveness and just try to land the stun. Uh, but you'll see here that uh, she's 13k, 13.3. I'm thinking that you're probably going to want to build her uh, at least like the 15k. You know, like I said, Fire Charlotte stats, 15k HP, uh, 1.4k defense, everything else into crit, crit damage, attack. Uh, and then any speed that you get after that, it'll be nice. But again, you kind of want her to go after your team. Uh, or bring her into a team where you're going to be able to proc a lot of dual attacks because you want that uh, dual attack buff to proc and then in turn be able to deal a lot of damage. Uh, but you see here on that S3, she did uh, 14k damage without Vigor, right? She didn't have Vigor on. Let's see, she had attack buff and she had uh, just increased speed. So her self attack buff uh, is also going to uh, allow her to deal a lot of damage. So even though she doesn't have high base attack, she is she does have the potential to deal a lot of damage still because she has that built-in attack buff, which is, again, a win in my book. Uh, the next one, skill number one, which is caught a big one, attacks the enemy with two meaty fish and has uh, up to a 60% chance to decrease defense for one turn. When activated as a dual attack, this attack changes into an attack that targets all enemies. So again, that's kind of why you want the dual attacks. Uh, you want it to be an AOE defense break. The change attack does not trigger a counter attack. Does not trigger a counter attack. That is huge. So she can't be countered. AOE defense break. She has a stun. She deals damage proportional to the enemy's lost health. Built in attack buff. She has also a CR push and a full cleanse if uh if that doesn't sell you on this unit i don't know what will she also has a 10 soul burn so whenever you haven't gotten a tool attack a dual attack you can just soul burn and you can do an aoe this attack does not trigger a dual attack or counter attack so it still can't be countered which is kind of insane uh, she acquires 20 fighting spirit uh, after she uses her skill number one. Uh, so we'll see it here. Here's that dual attack and the S1. Uh, she did 7k on, on a defense break. And then everybody else, she did about almost 4k damage. Uh, I think they have her, yeah, they have her on Senya's artifact, right? That's actually the artifact that I run on my regular Fire Charlotte anyway. I really like the artifact just because of the extra damage proc that you get. Uh, if you're not familiar with Senya's artifact, it's Uberius Tooth, but for knights is pretty much what it is. Uh, can't be countered. That's insane. Because you can bring her into Rems. You can bring her into Violets. You can bring her into any unit that's going to counter you, and she won't get countered. That just adds to her survivability, and uh, it just increases the likelihood that you're going to win the match if you're not getting countered. Uh, let's take a look at her artifact. 
mature sunglasses. This one I think is really, really good. I think if you have the powder, you should definitely pick this up if you're unable to pull it uh, when you're pulling for her. Uh, but if you fully max it out, it increases crit damage by 30%. When attacked, decreases damage suffered by 14%. So this is very similar to uh, Draco Plate, except here you just reduce the damage suffered altogether, not just crit damage suffered. Uh, this increases critical hit damage by up to 30%. If you fully max this out, I think it'll be nice if you do have it, but not necessary. Um, so if, I think the two artifacts that you're probably going to run want to run are going to be maybe Symbol of Unity, Mature Sunglasses, and Senya's Artifact, right, for the extra procs. Uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, the Senya Artie might not be that great. However, she does give herself attack buff. And if you build her with as much attack as you can, she is going to pop a lot of units for a good amount of damage. So I think that's really good. Uh, but depending on how you want to build her, if you want to build her more offensively, you're probably going to go with Senya's Artie, maybe Symbol of Unity. Uh, if you want to build her as a more all-around bruiser, uh, you're probably going to go with her Mature Sunglasses Artifact. Uh, another limited artifact that I think is definitely going to be worth to pull, if not for her, but for any other knights uh, in the future. I think this would even go well with fire charlotte right just regular fire charlotte uh it's going to increase her crit damage and give her some more tankiness so it might be worth keeping two copies if you pull multiple uh you know i'm it's it's like draco plate right draco plate you really want to hold on to as many copies as you can if you have a plus 30 draco plate it's awesome uh otherwise it's not really necessary uh, unless you are going full uh legend rta right but uh take a look at her lobby animation it's awesome she's on a beach chair relaxing having a good time on top of the bar stool that's another reason to pull this unit so we are going to be pulling uh if we do pull her early on we're going to keep going we're going to try at least one pity's worth hopefully we can get the artifact uh and her within that amount if not we're probably going to have to go back in at least for one artifact uh, but let me know your thoughts about Summer Break Charlotte. Are you going to be pulling for her? Hopefully you will. If anything, try to get at least one copy of each. Uh, but we'll see. I think she's going to be really good. I think she's going to be a really good bruiser team comp staple uh, for the current meta. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, if you have enjoyed the video, hit that like button if you haven't subscribed. Hey, think about subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like there. content like this. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.